Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the movie trivia showdown. The ultimate showdown tournament continues on, and I am joined, as always, by Mark Ellis. Mark, this is this, it's so funny how this match is. First of all, if you look for most brackets, and I don't think a lot of people would have had this particular match, but boy, am I glad to have it because it's kind of a reunion for us. It's like we're going to the Collider White Elephant Christmas Party back in 2015. We have perhaps the greatest host in the history of movie talk, Perry Nemiroff, taking on Mark Riley, who is a regular and everything from Collider Live, Collider Nightmares, all that good stuff. We saw them at the office day in and day out. And Christian, I'll tell you this, outside of the movie trivia schmodown, you just want to talk about people who talk about movies professionally, these are two of the brightest minds and the quickest wits in the business. Well, I mean, they they were very friendly. You know, uh, they were they were good friends. They did a lot of shows together. They worked together for years. Uh, and Mark Riley, right now, it's, it's so funny where they are in their schmodown careers. Because first of all, if you look at Perry Nemiroff, who had taken time off and maybe decided I'm going to step back, and she came back for exhibitions and performed very well in those exhibitions until she said, I think I want to start doing this again. And then Coy's like, well, why don't you come join us? And she's like, all right, I'll do that. And boy, was it the right decision because she pulls off maybe the upset of the year. I'm not just talking about of the tournament, of the year in beating Mike Kalinowski, who is the reigning movie trivia showdown team's champion, and she defeated him. Uh, and now the other side is Mark Riley. Mark Riley is having a little bit of a rough stretch. There's no doubt about it. He knows it. He said it. He had that devastating loss against Shazam, and then he followed that up with a not great performance, as he will tell you, against the video Drew. So Mark Riley is trying to get back to that Mark Riley of old. Perry's hoping that that doesn't happen today. Yeah, it really is interesting because sports fans will know when you watch a tournament setting, and we've mentioned it before in previous rounds of this very tournament, that sometimes you just need to get that rust off. You need to squeak by and get a W. Even if you're limping into the next round, that's all the confidence you need. But it doesn't hurt to be in Perry Nemiroff's shoes or glass slippers, shall we say, because you feel like a Cinderella story. You knock out somebody like Mike Kalinowski. It wasn't a TKO or a KO, but you get the job done. And now you're going up against Mark Riley. I think she's probably coming into this matchup with more confidence than one of the greatest players in the history of the Schmodown. You explain that science to me. Well, listen, the thing is with, with Perry is that she had to start off uh, with a rough road and playing Mike, and who's a two-time Inner Geekdom champion, the current team's champion, two-time team's champion, and she beat him. And now she goes up against a former two-time singles champion. So if she can pull this off today, and reminder that, that the winner of this plays the winner of Paul Oyama and Jeff Snyder, which is coming up um, in just a little bit here on Tuesday. And this, you take this match, two in a row, this is a very similar run, I would say, that well, like Andrew Guy did when he defeated Mark Riley and Dan Merle back in the day if Perry Nemiroff who was 0-1 hasn't competed in singles before her, Mike, her match with Mike like in like three years uh, we're going to see what's going to happen it's not knowledge we know that Perry Nemiroff's knowledge is second to none it's how well is she learning the game in her match against Mike it seemed like pretty well yeah, that's right. And you said that they were friendly around the office earlier. That was never my experience. These two hate each other. These sure. two always at each other's throats, day in, day out, yelling, screaming, shouting, could not be in the same room for years at a time. They despise one another, Christian. Am I right? You are. And they, uh, Riley was bringing his dog, Leia, to chase around uh, the cat. And then uh, the cat would then scratch the dog. Yeah. And it, it, was, it, it, was, it was constant conversations that I would have to have these two. A lot of bad blood here. Uh, between yeah, uh, yeah I, I think Riley and Perry get along just fine. Leia and Dewey, maybe not. So we'll, we'll have to find out with this incredible promo put together once again by the great Nerd Crime. Well, that happened. You know, I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever been upset like this. Yeah, tough match. I mean, you know, we know that going forward, that's not going to win games. But lucky we escaped with a victory here. 
The thing about the schmo down is that when it knocks you down, it can knock you down hard. I just don't think that Mark Riley has got the juice. I'll be honest with you, that's not a pretty win. I'll take it, but we'll it's not it. pretty. With Riley, he gets another opportunity here against a former colleague. The Clyde reunion. Me, Harry, Riley. It's gonna be good. Get ready for the most backwards pep talk in the world right now, but I've got some confidence from beating Mike Kalinowski. There is no doubt, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. I know things can change at any second. So with playing Mark Riley, I can't believe I'm playing Mark Riley, by the way. Yeah, wasn't that great? Yeah. yeah you are. I do think Perry is a type of player when things really go your way, then she's dangerous. I've had to change my entire game now. By going in against Perry, Perry is like, Perry's sneaky and good. I remember back in the day when I used to have fun in the Schmodown. Study here, go over there, maybe try to win a belt here. Forgot who I was. I'm gonna go have fun and play a, a, a match against Perry I know how to play, and that's just one, one question at a time. Mark Riley won, is a wonderful person, but I know his reputation in this league. Either I legitimately win, and yeah, that would be wonderful, but if I lose, I'm losing to one of the nicest guys in the world and an accomplished showdown player? That's not a bad loss right there. I hate this match that I just did because I know how much, how much better I am. So Perry, I love her to death but she better be prepared. I can work with my weaknesses if I have the strategy, and I think I do right now. And you know what else I have? Got a little extra Dewey love this week. It's not real, I kinda want it to be. If I set my mind to it, I can win. I know I can't, oh my God, oh Jesus, oh God, Leia. I mean, it's pretty much what we said. Mark Riley is looking to get back to that place. He doesn't like it's. I talked to him after that match with Shazam uh, weeks back, and he he like any other player that really loves this thing was was thrown off by that loss. And I think it took him into that video Drew match because he still hadn't quite recovered. Well, what's the Finstock Exchange doing to get him ready? What have they been doing? And Riley said his approach is going to be different in general. He's going to just approach it less studying, more fun. She's going to have fun. And I think that Perry Nemiroff, I don't know what her new approach is going to be. It could be the exact opposite with the help of, you look at what Koi Jandrew is doing right now with the Mercs. Man. Uh, all right. So I'm going to bring in both Koi Jandrew and Bobby Finstock, who is a, that's great. Okay, there he is. All right, Koi, let's start with you, man. You are having some run right now. Uh, this is, you guys have, climbed back up there and are doing some uh making some moves so with perry nemiroff against mark riley obviously you had to prepare her for kalinowski how do you prepare her for a two-time singles champion well we do not count him out i know where he is after his recent matches and where his headspace is but there's a reason he is yodi there's a reason he is is regarded where he is in the schmodown so we're not counting him out i have a lot of respect for mark as a player as a man uh, i really like mark and i was popping in and out of Collider for those couple of years too. I like seeing those dogs and cats chasing each other all nimbly bimbly, but I definitely want to go in this with the motivation and momentum that we left the Kalinowski match with. I think Perry played exceptionally well. I think she surprised a lot of people. It wasn't that Mike played bad, badly, it was that Perry played well, and I think that's the really important thing for me with my Mercs is a lot of people counted us out, and since the very first Inner Geekdom match, I said I liked being the underdog. Now, we're, we're still the underdog for me getting the Modi. We're still, you know, a not the top of the totem pole, but now we're not as, oh, the quirky Mercs, and I like that. People don't know what to expect from us. We're not quite where I want to be, but we're much more comfortable, but I still come from that underdog position. I still know this is a tall order. I still am aware that Perry's bracket was not an easy one. We had to take down Mike. Now we're going against Riley, but I feel really good. I trust Perry. She's a genius and she loves this game and I'm counting on her Tiger Woods-esque competitive nature. Yeah, and you know, Christian, I love hearing Corey say Nibbly Bibbly. I know you're the t-shirt guy, but I, I would buy that on a shirt. I want to see Nibbly Bibbly hashtag. I think the world could use it. Uh, Gucci, 
Conversely, you have a lot of players in your faction, the Finstock Exchange, that make their bread and butter. Their whole science of the Shbodan is predicated upon study and research. But Yodi has this new approach where he just wants to relax and have fun. Is that something that has come from your mentorship or is it something that is a little off the beaten path for you, a competitor not studying as much? Well, look, I mean, we've been dotting our T's and crossing our I's lately. You know, when we should be crossing our T's and dotting our I's. That's the issue. You know, I agree. Mark is a, is a better player when, he lets, when he's relaxed and when he lets himself just have fun, like he was saying. We had to refocus him again. You know, playing, uh, you know, the, the video Drew match, uh, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a little stumble. And obviously what happened with who's the boss against uh, Shazam as well. Um, you know, but, you know, he's back. He's back on track. He's going to back have it. He's back having fun. Uh, and we're going to try to make this, you know, he's going to try to get back and, and give us that one, maybe one or two more Riley runs because we know he has it in. All right. Well, thank you to both Finstock and for Coy. We're going to put you guys in the waiting room. Good luck to you both. All right. Yeah, put is he uh, Gucci October so that we just call him Mr. October? Is he trying to take Reggie Jackson's moniker? Yeah, I mean, he's, as long as he doesn't say Mr. November, I'm all right. That's, that's all right. Derek Jeter only. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get ready to do this because I, I want to see this match. How about yourself? Nibbly bibbly. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Introducing first, representing the quirky Mercs with a record of one win, one defeat. She is scary. Harry Nemiroff! Harry Nemiroff! Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Patting it up. That's a tough-looking tattoo, right? <laughs> it's like Mike Tyson having, having his own tiger. Uh, not real yet. <laughs> it's not real yet? Oh, okay. Well, it looks good. Uh, Harry, look, this was... Uh, this was something when you took that you uh, people have been talking about your win since it happened all those weeks ago and you know you got to play here we are playing against mark riley but take me through how it's been you know so you you beat mike kalinowski and how did it feel after that match and the, your confidence in the game after that oh i was flying after that match i felt so so good but the one thing that i didn't want to do after winning that one match was get ahead of myself and have that confidence kind of, you know, cloud the importance of the work that I still needed to do to be able to apply strategy to this game, which I still think is going to be the key here. It's I'm basically approaching this the same exact way I approached that last match. Strategy and fun. As long as I can accomplish those two things, I think I have a chance, but like I can't. I can't ba bad mouth Mark Riley whatsoever. I feel honored to play him right now, and I know how good he is. I know he's a wonderful person. So I, really, one way or the other, I'm going to feel good about this because I'm going to have fun playing the game. Perry, what would a win over Riley do for you in the eyes of the league, do you think? Because a lot of people saw you get the juice back to wanting to play when you were in an exhibition match and performed so well. And then you upset Mike Kalinowski and you have people say Perry's back. You also have a faction saying, well, she caught him by surprise. So if you beat Mark Riley to advance to yet another round in this tournament, what does that say about scary Perry Nemiroff? I had a feeling that would be part of the conversation, you know. There are a lot of nice folks out there who like gave me a pat on the back for actually winning, but it is it's been a very long time since I've played in singles. I knew I was the underdog and I knew some of the conversation was going to be, you know, like it was a stroke of luck. But if I win this match, then I have that I got that extra like foundation of confidence and you know, may maybe I could be a real force in this league, not just game by game, but but overall, which is what I want to be. Well, we are glad to have you back and glad to see you in this match here. Scary Perry Nemiroff waiting for Mark Riley. We'll see you in just a moment. Good luck. All right, Perry Nemiroff. She is ready, and so is her opponent. And her opponent, representing the Finstock Exchange with a record of 12 wins. Seven defeats and four knockouts. He is the 2018 Ultimate Schmodown Teams winner, 
and the former two-time movie trivia schmodown champion of the world, Mark Yodi Riley. Mark Yodi Riley. Hi. Back, ladies and gentlemen. He is back. back. Mark, look, man. So we didn't really get to talk about it a lot during the video Drew match, but coming off of that loss of Shazam and then you and I talking and you weren't really happy with the way you played against Drew. At what point do you just look back and say, okay, I'm not playing this game the way that I want to do it. It's time to uh, it's time to restructure and, and point my di- and, and, and a new direction. If you yeah, yeah, it, it, it really came. It, it, I stumbled. The, the who's the boss Shazam match really, really hurt. And, you know, I had to take a lot of, uh, I took it on the chin. I was really uh, up here a lot. And then I, I carried into the video Drew. And I and I realized something after that video Drew match. Is that I, I lost a little bit of who I was because I'm running around with some guys. You might have heard of them, right? Finstock has changed. You got the, you know, the Ben Batemans and the Merles and the Rokas. And uh, we take care of our own. And we, uh, we, we do a lot of uh, prep. And I think that the prep works for me. But I think that I came at it wrong. And that this match right now, it's all about having fun. It really is. You guys said it a lot. I missed out on the Yodi of old, where I was just going in and knowing that I'm going to just want to have a good game, play like I know how to play, which is having fun. And then, like, if I win, great. And if I, if, if I don't, well, you know what? Then I work on it again, and I, and I take it to the faction, and, and we get better for next time. And so here we are, a little bit looser, a little bit more fun. We'll see what happens. Riley, does it make it easier for you to employ this newfound policy of just trying to have fun and not overthink it when you look across at the desk, the virtual desk, and you see somebody who you genuinely like and admire, a friend like Perry Nemiroff? Does that make it more simpler for you to execute your newfound Zen philosophy? Yeah, it doesn't hurt. You know, Perry is one of my favorite people in this business and uh, worked for years with her. Um, uh, When I heard like the rest of the world, but she beat Mike Kalinowski. I think my neighbors heard me, I scream so loud. That is a great win. And I think because of it, she's coming in loose and having fun and that is perfect. So two old friends that come together for a movie trivia match. I mean, is there anything better? I don't think so. Let's do this. I love the Perry's here and is my opponent. And I would implore the same kind of thing if it was Kalinowski, I'll tell you that. He would just probably be a little bit louder and uh, yelling at me more. Fair enough. All right. Well, Mark Riley, the former two-time champion, is here. Going to move him out, bring back Perry. And there is Mark Riley. Perry. And it looks like an old episode of either Schmoes No or Movie Talk. We are yep. all here together, ladies and gentlemen. So, Mark, our competitors have arrived. So, well, yeah. Go to the rules. I'll, I'll do the rules if, if these two competitors can stop yapping and talking trash at each other. Man, they really do not like one another. Uncomfortable. Oh, to nice tattoo, Perry. Where'd you get it? <laughs> Your dog is real cute, Riley. Really nice cat. What's its okay. name? Okay, okay, kids. Just, just relax or I'm turning this car around. Oh, yeah. Roll round at number one. Eight questions. Right different corners of movie, trivia, showdown, and know-how. Every question's worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round at number one. As soon as you hear the question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever utensil you have on whatever writing surface you provided for yourself. Once we ask you by name or nickname to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule. (laughs) Hey, we used to work with him too throughout the duration of the three round match. If you need another 15 seconds, you want to buy yourself more time to get that correct answer, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the match. You may initiate the challenge, we'll bring in your manager, they'll confirm and ratify that said challenge is taking place and clearly state the case for the challenge. Christian, I believe you have one more question to ask Perry and to ask Riley. All right, well, I start with Riley. Are you ready? Yes. And Perry, are you ready? That I am. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. All right. Round number one. Question number one in the realm of action adventure. Sam Jackson starred in this 2000s sequel, which was also a continuation 
of a Richard Roundtree film series. Christian, I Perry Riley is somebody, right? Isn't that like a person? Sounds like Perry a bot. Riley. Sounds Maybe like I'm thinking of Terry O'Reilly, the hockey player. Maybe. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. Pens down, hands up. And we start with Riley. Shaft? Yes. Perry? I can't believe I got that shaft. That is correct. All right. Question number two. He's a bad man. Your next question is in the realm of what shaft fights against crime. Crime movies. And your question. In which Quentin Tarantino film does a character explain why he doesn't tip waitresses at diners? What's your uh, what's your go-to tip, Christian? Yeah, you, you had a nice meal. Let's say Wood Ranch. How much? What's your percentage? Twenty percent. Twenty. Yeah. That's a good man, right there. Five, That's a family man. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, Perry. It's a Pulp Fiction. That's incorrect. And Riley. Reservoir Dogs? Yes. Riley keeps the lead there as we 2-1 as we get to question number three. Dramas is the category. This 1992 film starred Jack Lemmon and Al Pacino following a group of salesmen at a real estate office over one night. Uh, favorite restaurant to go to, Christian. I, you know I'm a Wood Ranch guy. What are you going to say? Sushi. Really? Yummy. Over Morton? So say five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Riley. Glen Gary, Glenn Ross? Yes. Perry? Nothing. Perry didn't have it. So Riley taking a two point lead here as we get three one to question number four. That's right. Relaxed. Riley working so far. Your next category is in the realm of new releases. Last 12 to 18 months-ish. And your question. Who plays Mr. Rourke, the owner and operator of the luxurious Fantasy Island in Fantasy Island? You ever watch this TV show when you were a kid? Or were you too young? Yeah, but I don't remember it too well. The plane, the plane, that's all I know. Yeah. And five, four, three, two, one. One pence down, hands up. And Perry? It's Michael Pena. Yes. Riley? Michael Pena. Got it. So Riley staying strong. Perry keeping uh, track here. 4 2. 4 2. As we get to our next question Fantasy Sci Fi. Casper Van Dien, Denise Richards, and Neil Patrick Harris star in what 1997 sci fi movie? You just want to take a breather from the banter, or you want to ask me any questions? I've been waiting for you to say that for years. I, I feel like I initiate a lot of it, so the floor is yours, sir. Whatever you want to ask me, go ahead. Okay, ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and Riley. Starship Troopers. Yep, and Perry. Starship Troopers. You are yeah. correct. As we get to question number six. This is in the world of comedies. Whoa! <laughs> He is relaxed. And your question. Which actress stars as a working class woman named Kate Sullivan in the 2018 remake of Overboard? Yeah, I don't I don't know why. Overboard, the original one, my parents like it was like their all-time favorite movie. I'm not sure. It. I've never seen the whole thing, but I hear it's great. Five, four, three, maybe I have some. two. Repeat the question, please. First one for Riley. Let me do that. And it is in the world of comedies. Haha. -ha. Which actress stars as a working class woman named Kate Sullivan in the 2018 remake of Overboard? I have seen it. I just remembered. I have seen it. Both versions. Good. Both. Congratulations. Yeah, we, I think we saw this, this one together. Yeah, it was back when um, you would take me. Five. To the movie. When I allowed to mark. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down, please. Pens down, hands up. And starting with Perry. Anna Ferris. Yeah. yeah. And Riley? I couldn't pull it. Riley didn't have it there. So Perry pulls within one as we see ourselves 5 4. Mark missing his first one Ever. as we get to question number seven in the category of horror slash thriller. Which actress starred as Angela Bennett in the 1990s tech thriller, The Net? 
maybe the most well-aged movie of all time to go back and watch it. It does work. It's it's strange, but it works. It's fun. Yeah. Fun ride. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Riley. Sandra Bullock. Yes, Perry. Sandra Bullock. And we have ourselves a fight here. It is six five with the final question coming here, Mark. Last one. That's in the world of animated movies. Could be drawn by a computer or by hand. Your question. In what Pixar film will you find the characters Flick, Hopper, and Heimlich? Yeah, I remember seeing the net in theaters and just being like, wow, the world is going to change. You can order pizza from your computer. Five, four, three, two, one. Perry? The Bug's Life. Yes. And Riley? A Bug's Life. Correct. All right. So what a battle it is so far. Six for Nemiroff, seven for Riley as we find ourselves in a scrap here going into round number two. Mark, the rule. The rules of round number two as Gucci is somewhere. In round number two, each team gets a spin at the wheel. I say team, I of course mean either Riley or Perry. Once you settle on a category from said virtual wheel, you're going to hear four questions in that genre. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We're nice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. I'll remind everybody out there that all competitors uh, have most of their JTE rules. Riley did use one of his in round number one, and both challenges are still valid because Mark Riley has a one-point advantage over Perry Nemiroff, 7-6. to six. Riley, you may consult with your manager as to whether you want to spin first or defer to your cat-friendly opponent. All right, we're going to remove both Perry and Coy. Uh, Riley, you're going to have... Uh an opportunity to talk to Tom, but if he's not available, you're going to have to decide yourself here. Uh, you got 60 seconds starting now. Okay, Gucci, I think I know what I want to do. What do you think? Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I think that's uh, probably smart. Uh, just play the game I know how to play, you know? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Let's do it. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Spin ahead. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to defer and let uh, Perry go first. I mean, it's like watching Phil Jackson. All right, let's uh, let's well, thank you, Riley. We're going to remove both Tom and yourself. We're going to bring back Perry and Coy. You have Sixty seconds to talk to Perry here. Coy, starting now. How are we feeling? I'm like still holding my hands up, like I'm answering questions right now. So that whole first round, you actually played even better than you did in the Kalinowski <laughs> round. And my favorite thing is your confidence. When you know it, you know it. You don't waste time. When you don't, you don't like you don't use JTEs. Like you've got all your JTEs. You're playing incredibly well. I love the focus, but I also see the smile. Those first couple, I didn't see the smile. Now it's back. I see the motivation and the smile. I want you having fun. What are you thinking going into the second round? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm I'm nice and happy right now with that six. So. I feel like I'm going into round two pretty strong, but like, I, I know what can happen with the wheel. I know what the, I want. I want the to get wheel is where you sing. The, remember, the wheel is where you get your wins. I think you're an incredible second round player. I think you get better every round, and I think you get better every game. So you're only playing better the more I see you play. Go into that with it. All right, so let's let's do this. Let's dance. I will take that confidence. Thank you, Coy. All right, here's the wheel. The wheel is up, and Perry's first spin is away. All right, we know, no what, we're for. We know what we're not looking for. See what happens here. And round and round it goes where it lands. It looks like spinner's choice. Spinner's okay, I so know. all right, sixty I, seconds. Koi, I'm, I'm, I think I know what I want. I've, is it the thing we discussed in the training and the ideas and the shape of leading up to this? Is it, are we going with that? I feel like that could go two different ways, but I'm, I, I, I know what I want. <laughs> okay, I, I think I'm with you. I well, I know I'm with you, but I think I'm excited. After I say my choice, can I just know if that was co- what Coy was thinking before you drop him out? <laughs> to you, yeah. Okay. Hey, wanna... I'm going with Dwayne Johnson. That's right. Okay, good. The Rock is our spirit animal. I'm excited for Black Adam. He killed it, Fando. <laughs> Let's dance. All right, uh, I like it. All right, Dwayne Johnson movies. All right, Coy, thank you. We're going to remove you out. Yeah. We're going to bring back, sorry, we're going to bring back uh, Riley. And we're going to get four questions in the realm of Dwayne Johnson movies. And Perry, are you ready? I am ready. Here you go. Four questions. First one. Dwayne Johnson 
plays the character of Roadblock in what movie franchise? The G.I. Joe film franchise. That is correct. Question two. In the 2014 Hercules, who plays Lord Coitus? Who John turn- oh, I'm sorry. Who turns to Hercules to help restore peace to his kingdom? John Hurt. For two points. That is correct. All right. Question three. Wayne Johnson's character has what profession which propels him into an adventure in the Disney film Race to Witch Mountain? He's a cab driver. Correct. And finally, last question here. Who directed Dwayne Johnson in the films San Andreas and Rampage? Brad Payton. Perry Nemiroff destroying that category, and nice. she's now up 14 7. Just r- breezes through it. Perfect round for Perry Nemiroff. All right, Perry, we're going to remove you. Bring back uh, Gucci here, or maybe not. Uh, Riley, <laughs> you might be without Gucci. That's all right, man. That's a hell of a mat- uh, uh, round there by Perry. I love yeah. it. It, yeah. it. It's going into this, uh, this thing that I know, and that is these matches, man. I love that. The Schmodown God just gave her Spinner's Choice. Let's see what I get now. Let's see what you get. All right. So without Gucci here. You get a manager. Yeah. You, you, uh, yeah. Where is the manager? Oh, well, he's uh, oh. he's around somewhere. Let's, well, good luck to you. Here's the, here's the wheel, and here's the spin by Mark Riley. Christian, it's almost like Riley's more relaxed not having to deal with Finstock. Are you reading that? I mean, he looks like me when I, when I can block, block him from my phone call. Round and round it goes. This is sports, sports. movies. Sports movies, Riley. You got sixty seconds to decide if you want to keep it or not. I love sports movies, but um, there might be some deep cuts in there. So uh, yeah, let's spin again. All right, spinning away from it, and here is the spin from Mark Riley as he tries to make up the deficit here of Perry Nemiroff, who has a seven-point lead. As we find out what Mark Riley will be spinning here. It's sports. Sports movies, <laughs> yeah, Mark. You, know. so you get sports regardless. All right, so you're getting sports movies. We're going to remove you for a second, bring you back. And Mark Riley will have four questions, Mark, in the realm of sports movies. That's All right. right. And, Mark, you did say you like sports movies. Is that true? I do like sports movies a lot. Okay. That historically really doesn't help you at all in the schmodown but it's nice to know no no it doesn't it 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 means nothing let's uh you know you know how it goes well here it is all you got to do answer the questions sports movies you're first of four for two points which actor stars as the jockey red pollard in sea biscuit toby mcguire two points he's off to a good start so far all right here's the uh the second one more all right in the world of sports movies in The Longest Yard, the remake, Terry Crews plays a character simply known as Cheeseburger Eddie who sneaks food from what fast food chain into prison? Multiple choice. Is it A. McDonald's, B. Burger King, C. in and out or D. Wendy's? go a mcdonald's Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. that's one point for mark riley all right here's the next next question here for mark riley all right your penultimate question in the world of sports movies what is the name of the 2008 film about elite running back ernie davis who played football for syracuse university multiple choice is it a draft day b the express C, when the game stands tall, or D, the blind side? I'm going to need those again, please. First one. All right, this is, oh, no, it doesn't count. One repeat of those? Yeah. Is it A, draft day, B, the express, C, when the game stands tall, or D, the blind side? B, the express. That is correct for another point, Christian. All right, so here is the question here. In order for Riley to come within one, Perry Nemiroff so far, 14. Mark Riley has 11. So here is the question, Mark. Your final question for two points in the world of sports movies. You'll find the fictional football team of the Washington Sentinels in what 2000 film?
the replacements. Based on the 1987 Washington football team that did win the Super Bowl, Christian, he is correct for two points. We got a one-point ball game going into round three. One point. Perry Nemiroff with a one-point lead over Mark Riley going into round number three. A tough sports category for Mark, but he navigated very well. And we see ourselves down just one. He's one point down. Oh, from... All right. So Thanks, man. now we are going to get the rules of round number three. Mark, how's it go? And I think I speak for everybody when I say, oh, Gucci's back. Round number three works <laughs> as thus. Each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. We need three numbers from each of you. You may not pick the same numbers as your opponent. Why is that? Because each number corresponds to a unique category of movie, trivia, schmodown, mystery. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one is worth three points. Your final question in round three is going to be worth five of the biggest points of the tournament. So, Christian, Riley, a very game effort, getting almost even with Perry, but it is Nemiroff who enjoys the one-point lead, so Perry... You get to select your three lucky numbers first. From 1 to 20, what feels fortunate? I really like the numbers. 13, 7, and 3. All right, and for Riley? I'm going to go with 9, 12, 17. 9, 12, and 17 for Riley. 13, 7, and 3 for Perry. All right, Gucci, you got uh, 60 seconds to talk to Riley starting now. Ugh, let's let's get it, Mark. This is it. Dude, were you there? Did you You're see the round? Did you did you get yes, to see I me did. hanging yeah. out and, and answering uh, some sports I questions? Did. Dude, I'm feeling I, good, I, man. I, I did. I did. They were tough. I didn't even know this. Uh, good. Great job. You, you Thanks, hung brother. In there, man. Uh, fighting uh, against adversity here. Let's uh, let's let's try to get back here and take this thing home. We'll do it, man. And we're gonna get you some internet in that uh, new apartment of yours. Yeah, that's, I appreciate it. All right, let's do All right, it. Let's, so, uh, Coy, you got 60 seconds. To talk to Perry starting now. Better every round, like I said, and then you aced your second round. You only missed two in the first. You went so quickly through the second round. That was a blink you missed. You got eight points without breaking a sweat. That went incredibly well. And we're going to play that same way going into this third round. You've got all your JTEs. We've still got a challenge, which you won't need. We won't even need those JTEs, but we got them if we do need them. So go in with that confidence. If you think you're, you know, just play around with that in your head. You've got the time. You're going in smiling. I want this happiness. I want this motivation. How are you feeling? Happiness is here. I'm feeling good. I'm I'm glad my Dwayne Johnson knowledge came in handy today, and I I'm feeling good. Still keeping my fingers crossed for the right categories now, but I'm feeling good. Those were deep cuts, and you had them like you knew that was with with instinct. And I'm so endlessly proud. You're playing exactly like I knew what you would when I picked you up. Ten like, seconds. This is our game. So remember Spidey. Remember Jurassic Park, and remember the win. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. so we're going to drop the managers out, keep the competitors in there. We're going to start with Mark Riley. Mark chose category number nine for your uh, for your first category, and that's the category of thriller. Here's your two-pointer. What 1997 thriller stars Michael Douglas and Sean Penn? I love this movie. The game. That's correct for two points. Mark Riley taking the lead and bouncing it back to Perry Nemiroff, who needs to hit her two-pointer mark, category 13. That's right, Perry. You selected category number 13, and Dan Marino's number corresponds to the world of directors. And your question. For two points to regain the lead, which actor turned director was behind the lens for the film Letters from Iwo Jima? Clint Eastwood. Perry's back on top by a point, Christian. She is, and it is bouncing back and forth. 16-15. What a match this is. And now we have Mark Riley, who chose category 12. Mark, Riley, and Ellis. Comedy. All right. Ah. So here it is. Comedy is your question, your three-pointer. Here is the question, Mark. In the 2004 Mean Girls what is the name of the book that the plastics have made that is filled with secrets and rumors? Five, four, three, two. The one. hit list. Looking for the burn book. Burn book. Burn book. Yeah. All, All right. right. Mark Riley. Brad Perry. I love this. <sighs> Riley has to hit his five. 
If he hits his five, it bounces back to Perry. However, if he misses, then Perry Nemiroff will advance to play the winner of Paul Oyama and Jeff Snyder. Riley, you chose category 17, animated. Animated movies. Five point. Here it is. Which DreamWorks animated film features the voice talents of Andy Serkis, Kate Winslet, and Ian McKellen? Five, four, three, two. Flushed away. That is correct. Mark Riley, massive, massive pull. Wow, what a pull by Riley, basically forcing Perry Nemiroff to hit her five to win the game, but she can still get some points here if she hits the three. But Riley, wow, what a pull by Mark Riley as we now get to Perry Nemiroff and her, uh, her three-pointer mark. That's right. So, yeah, Perry, this does get you points, but ultimately, whether you get this question correct or incorrect, you're still going to have to answer your five-pointer for the win. So you selected number seven for your three-pointer, and Joe Theismann's number corresponds to Disney movies. And your question, to pull to within one, Mark Riley's lead, in Beauty and the Beast, according to the song Gaston, what does he use in all of his decorating, quote. Five, four, three. I don't have it. There's no point. All right. Um, We're looking for antlers. (laughs) Antlers, So here is where we stand. Perry Nemiroff. She hits the five. She advances. If not, Mark Riley and the Finstock Exchange pick up some points. Mark, Perry chose category number three. Yes, she did, Christian. And that corresponds to a category about a man who's in a club he can't talk about. And that is Brad Pitt. And your question. For five points and the win. Asked to the greatest host in movie talk history from the fourth greatest host in movie talk history. Here, your question. You'll find a drilling machine used to simulate an earthquake in what 2000s Brad Pitt film? Five, four, Three. The question. That's the first one. Uh, categories Brad Pitt. The question. You'll find a drilling machine used to simulate an earthquake in what 2000s Brad Pitt film? Hands up, Perry. Oh, sorry. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Second one. Categories Brad Pitt. You'll find a drilling machine used to simulate an earthquake in what 2000s Brad Pitt film? Five, four, three. I don't know, but I'm just going to say World War Z. And your winner! Advancing to the next round, Mark Yodi Riley. Looking for Ocean's 13, Ocean's 13. And what a battle it was. Holy moly, what a battle, you guys. Perry, gonna bring you back moment here. Uh, and wow. You talk about you talk about pressing. You, wow. you talk about trying to find that Riley of old and finding it because Riley. I'll talk. I'll ask you this, Tom, because Riley did what he used to do. He took his time. He stayed in it, and he hit that five point. That was a hard five point animation question, Ooh. and he nails it. So, how do you feel about this, and how are you guys feeling going into the next round? 
great pull. Fantastic pull. That's the old Mark Riley. That's what he does. Oh, man. I, I was scared. I was scared. Perry's a great player. She killed that second round. And Mark, Oof. like I said, way to fight through that one. Sorry, my internet conked out. Uh, I'm a loser. But uh, that being said, fantastic stuff, man. We're on to the next round. We're on to the next round. That's all we can do. Great pull. Great yeah, pull. Yeah, Riley, um, I just have a simple question for you. What is flushed away? <laughs> yeah, that's a DreamWorks animated movie that uh, Kate Winslet starred. You know, it's it also starred Hugh Jackman that was left out of the uh, uh, the uh, description. The thing, it's it's really, really interesting because you know, if all the things Tom that we talk about, that's one of those movies that actually came uh, with a little bit of brushing up. <laughs> have you seen the movie? Have you have you seen Flushed Away? I have seen the movie, and it's uh, it, it's it's quite a movie. It is a movie. It's animated. Wow. It's probably one of your favorite movies now. Uh, I will. I, I, I got to ask. You, I got to ask you this, Riley. So when you when you have this match and Perry's up uh, going into round number three. Yeah. So, you know, again, from the last two matches that you had and the confidence were off a little bit. Um, did you feel confident enough? And how did you how, what was the difference going into this one? Yeah, it, it, I was confident, um, in, in, including the fact that, I mean, I, unfortunately, Anna Ferris, I knew it. It just had one of those things, you know, and that's not even nerves. It was just like, Pah! so I was there. I almost had a perfect round. I knew that if I could hang, if I got something I didn't want, I got sports, I got to hang with it. So I knew that if I just kept going and answering questions, I'd get one. I, I, I'd hopefully come out on top. Just keep calm. And it did. It worked. It, it, this is what I wanted to get back. All right, well, uh, Riley, yeah. let me ask you this before we let you go. You're sure. facing the winner of Jeff Snyder versus Paul Oyama. Any Ooh. sort of desire to play one over the other, or is your carefree attitude saying, let's say fair, I don't care who wins? You know, the carefree attitude, yeah. I don't care who wins. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about it. I was always just, uh, you know, I didn't know who, who I could play next. But there is somebody that I'm looking at a little bit. Because uh, I have a history with this person. I kind of hope Jeff Snyder goes through. He beat me in singles on a last-ditch five-pointer himself. So I think uh, that would be a fun rematch to see. Uh, plus, we have the you know the history of Odd Couple and who's the boss. We meet the movie press. You know, I don't really like the guy that much. So, you know, we can, uh, we can go there. Fair enough. All right, look, congratulations to you both. Uh, again, Gucci, this is a big... Big three points here to pick up because and and with the way that the Mercs are playing and honestly the way Perry just played here God. too that team is just stacked. May I say real quick fantastic. about Perry? Please go can, I, can I say Perry? Wow, Perry is so awesome. Well she is so calm. She is so collected. She knows her stuff. Again, she I mean she pulls that five. It's over. I don't pull that five. It's over. Wow, Perry, I'm so stoked for you. You were saying up top. You are one of those people in the league. You are now one of those people, in my opinion, that we have to watch out for. Jeez. Yeah, she played awesome. the game fantastic. That was a she professional really match. God. She played she great. She did. She played very well, uh, especially for someone who's only played, what, three singles matches now. So, all right. Well, we're, congratulations to both Mark Riley and Bobby Gucci here, the Finstock Exchange, picking up three big points and advancing into the third round. All right. Going to remove Mark Riley, going to remove Gucci and bring back. Harry Nemiroff and Coy, look, I gotta, I gotta start with, I gotta start with you, Perry. What an absolute performance here today. I mean, yeah, it, granted, you didn't, it was a tough five pointer at the end there, and you didn't get it, but you got to be happy with the way that the match went, minus the loss. Yeah, I, I'm pretty happy right now. I, when I, when I couldn't pull that last answer, and I will say. Like I am kicking myself a little bit because I knew the answer that I said was wrong. And I feel like if I had just latched on to the Oceans franchise, I might've been able to narrow it down, but whatever. The point is like I lost in the end and it didn't feel devastating. And it was because I'm enjoying myself and I'm enjoying the game and losing this match doesn't stop me from wanting to play more. And then I don't know, to hear the two of them say such nice things at the end of their bit just now, I mean, all of that combined, like, I feel great right now. Yeah, Coy, does that, does that transfer over there too, man? Because, I mean, as you're watching as you're watching this match, and, like, I mean, 
she had Mark Riley on the ropes uh, a few different times. She, she, you know, was only down by one after the first. She goes perfect in the second round. She's up yeah. to the third. And then Mark Riley pulls that movie, you know, and shows why he was a two-time champion because that, that pull was just incredible. <sighs> Uh, so did you did you honestly that five pointer to when Riley had? Do you think it was over? I thought it was over. I, I thought that long pause was either artistic flourish, but in the loss category, or he might pull JTE and like I just I know that is a Hugh Jackman movie, which is why that was brilliant writing from the team. That was a five point version of that question. Um, and and the way we played, I'm so proud of Perry played incredibly. I meant it. She played even better than the Kalinowski match. We made it all the way to a must win five point scenario. I'm very excited to have her on my faction. I'm very excited for the next time I get to put her in any league. Uh, that was what, a third time playing in singles to go that way. And I remembered it was somewhere in Oceans. That was something I wouldn't have. I mean, I don't get two pointers right, but I wouldn't have gotten that fiver. Um, and the way she played, I'm just so proud. She was happy. She was she was doing the merch proud. And the way she played in the second round was what we prepared for. The way she handled herself in the first round was how we thought it was going to go. It's hard to train for that third round, and she did very well, and it could have been our game with one. We were flushed away in this case, but it could have gone the other way easy. Yeah, Perry, I, I think I know your process pretty well here. You do something intense, whether it's cardiovascular exercise, running a marathon, or it's filming a vid, or it's an intense trivia match. So complete this statement for me. I'm Perry Nemiroff. I'm going to celebrate with a blue moon, the meatball shop, and next season in the Schmodown, I'm going to what? I'm going to come back and keep playing if you'll have me. Well, it, all right. Thank you. Again, Perry, I do want to say this was an incredible match. It was really awesome to see. It was as a, as a fan of just this game in general, watching it, you know, even though we're calling it, we're still watching and seeing us bounce back and forth. It also probably felt equally uh, a little more fun because it was Mark Riley. Oh, without a doubt. But ser seriously, thank you to all of you guys. I was very, very nervous about jumping back in at all, but between Koi, the quirky Mercs, and just the way you two run all of this, it just, I don't know, it felt like the game just opened its arms to me again, and that made the experience all the better. Well, we're thrilled to have you back, and I know that whether it's teams or singles, I know how competitive you are, and I think that we're not going to be able to get rid of you. Yeah. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, Perry Nemiroff, Scary Perry Nemiroff, with a, just an incredible performance here today. Uh, didn't get the win, but I think she still won a lot of the fans' uh, hearts and minds here today. So thank you very much, both Coy and Perry. What a match by Perry Nemiroff. Mark Riley does advance, but I think Perry is right. She didn't feel like she really lost because – she kind of won by losing here today, too, because I don't think you can look at that performance and say, oh, she doesn't know the game or she doesn't know or she doesn't have the knowledge to do it. You, you can't say that. Look at what she did in that round, too. It was like I don't before we could even answer questions. She was spitting them out. And then Riley was right there answering questions. So Perry Nemiroff will be back in singles, but we will see Mark Riley in the third round. Well, yeah, Christian, I don't think it'd be an inaccurate headline to say Mark Riley advances in Perry Nemiroff's league because you know that once she embraces something like the Schmodown, the sky is the limit. To borrow the phrase from a legendary band, unchanged, nothing stays the same. But for the immediate future, Mark Riley, what a meaty pairing that would be if it's Riley versus his arch enemy, Jeff Snyder. But Jeff Snyder also with a very tall task ahead of him coming up within a week here, facing Paul Oyama, a rematch from that epic contest that we saw live in New York. So a whole lot of fun around the movie trivia showdown. And today's match just gave us all the congenial feels we could ask for. And two competitors explaining a whole lot about movie trivia. Well, there it is. The final score here, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Riley, 20, Perry Nemiroff, 16, Mark Riley advancing into the next round, picking up three points for the Finstock Exchange and staying alive as he will face the winner of Paul Oyama and Snyder. That comes up this Tuesday. You want to check out which matches are coming up? Well, then head on over to the SchmodownLive.com. Go to the schedule over there. We have the full tournament in swing right now. The team's tournament not too far away. We have a couple more of the pay-per-views coming up. It is it has never been a better time to be a $10 patron. Go to Patreon.com slash Schmodown. Join today. For the great Mark Ellis, I'm Christian Harloff. We'll see you next time.